You know, uh, if you ever watch some of these uh, old movies like Bob Hope and Bing Crosby and they, they go road to Rio or road to so-and-so, and they'd get on this island or something and they'd be out there and all of a sudden the so-called gods were not pleased. And all of a sudden the, the volcano would erupt and the smoke would fill the air and, you know, they just did a booming voice, you know, and it just would be that way. You know, it never hit me. This is exactly what really happened to the Israelites when they were out Mount Sinai. Ooh. That when they were there, wow. the mountain, Moses went up on the mountain, but the Lord spoke mm. to the people, but mm. the smoke and the fire was there so they could not see his face. Mm. And he spoke directly to mm. the people. You know, sometimes we think, well, that's funny and that's fictitious. But you know, that was actually based on truth that God did speak from the mountain mm. to the people of Israel. Well, they actually heard his voice. Yes. But you know, we see this is where the Ten Commandments was given. Mm. This is when the Ten Commandments was given. Mm. In Exodus 20, verse 1. Exodus 20, in verse 1. And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which you brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Mm. Years ago, I preached a sermon, and a, a woman came up to me, and she said, you know, I'm 87 years old, and she was from California, and she said, um, you, you said something in this sermon that I've never heard before, and it really just totally hit me. And my question is today, why the Ten Commandments? And the statement I made back then, there was no need for the Ten Commandments if God's people wanted to have a relationship with him. Wow. Mm. God created man in the first place to mm. love, to have a relationship. Right. Because of man's own volition and his own free will. God did not want to cre create somebody that would automatically love him. He wanted some people that would love him with their own will to love him. My, my. So when we see that if people, if his people would have loved him and obeyed his commandments in the first place, or his covenant, this is before the commandments, his covenant, there would not be a need for the Ten Commandments. My. But my. we have to understand that he gave the Ten Commandments not to free them, not to set them free, because he had already set them free out of the land of Egypt. He already set them free out of slavery. He already showed them through the miracles of setting them free that he was God already present. So he already redeemed them and brought them out of slavery. He already had set them free. Well, God has set us free to think in our own will. Mm, wow. God has set us free to make our own decisions. Mm. But it got to the point that these people were out there and they were no longer in bondage. They weren't under the rulership of Pharaoh and they could start thinking for themselves. Wow. Mm. They were out on their own. Yes. They had a free will to think. They had a free will to love without the pressure of being under Pharaoh's bondage. Yeah. God had set them free. He gave them also the right to be able to govern themselves. That they were able to follow God's covenant with them. 
So we see that God gave the law not to save his people, but teach them how to live. Teach them how to live. When we look at the Ten Commandments, which we're going to be looking over the next few weeks, is first of all, he first spoke that I am the Lord thy God. He wanted to know, let them know that he was the only God, that he was Jehovah, that he was Yahweh, and there were no other gods. That he was... See, they came from slavery where they worshipped many, many gods. And today we have people that worship many, many gods. Over in India, they have like over one million gods they worship. That's the reason why cockroaches have a good time over there because they're worshipped. You know, you don't step on a god. You don't step on living things. That's the reason why cows run around loose because they worship the cow. So we see that we see yeah. there's a many other gods that he was trying to reiterate to them. I am the God that brought you out of bondage. I'm the one that set you free. I am the one and only true God. I am Jehovah. I am Yahweh. I am Adonai. I'm Elohim which is all the same, yes. that I am the one yes. true God. So he brought them out, out of slavery, so that he could, they could start thinking for themselves. They could reason in themselves to either choose to follow God or not to follow God. But the people, like most people, is, goes back to Adam and Eve because of sin, we are a rebellious lot. Nah. I mean, I don't care who you are, that we have a tendency to rebel. We don't come to exactly what we have to do. If you don't think you rebel, think about a little child as a baby. You know, they just didn't do a lot of things. You know, if they didn't get their way, they learned early in childhood, almost from the womb to the crib, that if I throw my fit, I'm going to put these people in order. <laughs> Isn't it true? <laughs> How many of you stayed up sleepless nights because of a kid yelling and screaming, and you couldn't, and you're about ready to pull your hair out, and you just didn't know why. But it is, people were born into sin. They have a sin nature. It is a natural rebellion in man. Nah. But God came, sent his son, so we would not be rebelled. He redeemed us from the curse. Yes, Christ. But we have to understand that he came to give us the law. We see that the law that we see in the Ten Commandments. There's a lot of things that we say in. It says, thou shall not. Thou shall not. Thou shall not. Mm -hmm. Well, it wasn't being negative telling you that you couldn't do. It was saying that you shouldn't do these things because I was looking after your well-being. And if you follow the Ten Commandments, you follow them that he's looking, that's a protection over you and your well-being. It's a protection over us to have a guide. Yes. Now, keeping the law mm. is not going to give you eternal life. Mm. Only life comes through the belief and accepting Jesus Christ as the Lord is saved. Lord, yes. Only through the blood of Jesus that we yes. are saved. Yes. But we're given the law or the teachings or the Torah that we are given the teachings so that we can have a life with, lot, with not a lot of problems. Amen. There's a lot of problems that we have from outside sources. 
Uh, Brenda and I talked, most of our problems in our life is not from what we do and say to each other, which we do enough of that anyway, but it's from outside sources. Yeah. Outside sources just come out at you. But he was given the law for you, for your protection, Praise God. for your well-being, that if you will do and follow the Ten Commandments, you will be set free from a lot of heartaches, Lord. a lot of pain. But not only that, you would be set free from the consequences Ooh. of sin. My, my. You know, a lot of people, they say, well, you, you know, I sinned that I can go and ask God to forgive me. Well, that's true. But you know, there's still consequences that you have to live in this life. My. There's still repercussions that still happen. So we have to understand that he gave the people, even though they saw all the miracles, he spoke to them, but he gave them the law, or he gave them the Ten Commandments for their protection and their well-being. Yes. Because he knew that their heart is basically sinful. It is mainly self-centered. It's no saying, what about me? We want so much. It's all about me. No, it isn't. Believe it or not, you're not all that a bag of potato chips. You know, you're not all that. You know, we have to understand that he gave the Ten Commandments because God knew their sinfulness. He knew the way they were. So we have to understand that he gave the law and he did all those shall not to teach them mm. because they knew. First of all, God knew these, these things. Mm. Mm. He knew man's capacity yes. for evil. My. Mm. He knew they were capable of doing evil. My. Now you think, well, I'm not evil. But I tell you what, we all have the capability to evil. Yeah. That's the reason why he said that in Isaiah it talks about he was wounded for our transgressions. That's our sins that we do. But it said he's bruised for our iniquities. And iniquities is our propensity to sin. It's that evil that wants to come out. So we see that he paid that price even for our iniquities. But God knew that he needed to tell and put it down into the people's minds of thou shall not. Yes. For their protection. He knew their, not only in their capacity to evil. Now, if you say, well, well I don't have a capacity to evil. Have you ever thought a thought that, uh, you know, if I just could have, man, I sure like to get that person out of, out of my life. Nah. Have you ever thought about saying, well, I want to, you know, Lord, I'd just like to kill those people and put them in the backyard and God come here and say, I don't know where they are. Oh, no. If anything ever went across your mind like that, mm. or have you ever thought, Lord, why did you give me these kids or this kid? Why did you do this? Oh dear. They just drive me crazy. You know, I just like to hang them up upside down and just do just leave them alone. Have, have anybody ever thought about, well, I like to run away? You thought you ever wanted to run away? Oh you know, yeah. But you know, that doesn't do any good. Because when you run away, you're taking yourself with you. <laughs> so we have the tendency to evil. We have a tendency to want to do things that are not godly. And God knew that God, he has the knowledge and he knew our capacity. 
And he knew the tendency of us. He knew even those, those Israelite people saw miracles, heard his voice. Yes. He knew they were still because in their heart. Mm. And he knew the knowledge. Well, God wanted. And he knew that they needed something tangible before them. Boy. How many times that we people tell us something and it goes in one ear and out the other. My, my, my. And it doesn't stick. And it doesn't get into your spirit. Sometimes he spoke. But till they saw it on the tablets of stone, seeing is believing too many people. My, my, my. Mm -hmm. So he knew that they had to see it. So we have to understand God knowing the tendency that the Israelite people had, the tendency and the capability they had, but he also knows the tendency and capability that we have. Praise God. Mm. Now, the Ten Commandments was a lifestyle. It's a way of living. It doesn't give you redemption. Because can you think of one law of all the ten that you've done or even thought about doing? You know, it's hard, but he gave them as the standard. Wow. The standard to follow. Wow. <clears throat> now we see that God gave the law because he prohibited sin. Mm. He knew that if we and them if they would would actually get into sin, <coughs> what guilt would do to them? Mm. Have you ever thought nah. when you've done something nah. what guilt has done to you? Have you ever felt guilty of something that you did wrong? Yeah. It really beats you up. When you have guilt, that means you have this feeling of no way out. Ooh, yes. And you become shameful. Mm. You have so much that you just, you tend to beat yourself up over guilt. But God, by the Holy Spirit that kills us when we do sin, He sins that. He doesn't put us into guilt. He put us into conviction. And there's a difference in conviction and guilt. Nah. Guilt says there's no hope. You're condemned. But conviction says there's a way out and you can be set free. Praise God. Through my forgiveness. Yes. And you're no longer bound by that. You know, we see that God is a God of care. He wanted to care so much for the people. And he knew their tendency and their capacity. And he knows us, our tendency and our capacity, our propensity to sin. He knows it, that, but he cares for us. Mm -hmm. That he wants to put it before us. That we will have a guideline. Yes. Now, have any of you been in school? Anybody been to school? And you get into a subject that you really don't understand. Anybody have a course that was eating your lunch? 
And that was before breakfast. <laughs> Eating your lunch before breakfast. So what did you do? You went out to seek somebody to help you. Find somebody that's a little bit smarter than you. Yes. To help you to understand. Mm. Well, this is the way the Ten Commandments is. The Ten Commandments is our tutor mm. oh. that makes us aware of our sinful nature. My. Mm -hmm. Makes us aware that we need redemption. Mm. It makes us aware that we need forgiveness through the blood of Jesus yeah. to make the Lord the Lord of our life. The Ten Commandments were given to us as a guideline so we will have a way of life that we will not have to look back over our shoulder to keep us in line. And that's why he gave it to the Israelite people. Even though they saw the wonders of God and they knew that he was one God and he spoke to them they saw all the miracles our human nature is not always seeking God our human nature is sometimes just gratification of our flesh nah. and walking our own way nah. and you can ask the question I asked at first Why the Ten Commandments? Because God knew people. Mm -hmm. He knew the rebellion of people. But even to put it personal, He knows the rebellious hearts that we can have. Yes. If you say that you don't have a rebellious heart, it says that ye without sin calling God a liar. Mm. So why have the Ten Commandments? To give us a guideline. Mm. Give us a standard to live by. Yes. To keep things in focus. To have a life that is prosperous. Mm. Have a life that's abundance. Have a life that always point to Jesus and his redemption to set us free. To set us free. You know, they're always trying to tear down the Ten Commandments all over the place. Because sinful hearts do not want to hear these things. They're trying to pass laws all the time to take them down. Because the evil tendencies and the propensity to sin, people don't want to have it put before them. But it's a good thing. It's a good thing these are put before us. It helps us to live the godly life. And when we do fail, that we can go to him and confess our sins and he's faithful and just to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Yes, amen. Why the Ten Commandments? Because God knows our hearts. He knows our will. Yes. He knows our tendencies. Mm. He knows our, what we are capable of doing. Right. So when we look at the Ten Commandments from now on, we need to look at it and say, Lord, thank you for this guideline. Thank you for your standards. Thank you, Lord. And Father, give me the ability to follow them. Yes. In Jesus' name, let us pray. 
Father God, we come to you and we just thank you, dear God, that in your infinite wisdom and your knowledge of us as man and our sinful nature, that you gave us the law, the Torah, the teaching, and the Ten Commandments, that we can apply them as the standard in our life. Father, we thank you that you are with us and you guide us to all truth and you give us the ability through your Son Jesus and the wooing of the Holy Spirit to run from evil. Father, that you protect us and I thank you, Lord, that your goodness and mercy follows us all the days of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.